So let me, um, let me kind of introduce you conceptually. What kind of things change as you are considering interference from more than one slit? So let's, uh, um, let me do it this way. So multiple slit interference. And I want to actually go back to, um, so another way to call this multiple slit interference is to call it um, N slit interference. And the kind of discussion that we are going to have, um, if we said that the N is equal to two, as a special case, but the discussion we are having, it should be equally valid for N equals two, for N equals any other number. Now, you guys are familiar with the N equals two case, right? That's the double slit. So, so let's just start out with that. I want, let's, let me draw the picture for double slit and we will build on top of that, how this picture has to change as you add more slits. So let me um, draw that picture for double slit that you have seen before. Mm. So some, I have a screen some distance away and these two slits are separated by some distance d. And I'm going back to the original picture where these slits are infinitesimally small. So whatever diffraction pattern you get from a single slit, it's super wide. So you don't actually see anything that you would call single slit diffraction pattern. Then the kind of pattern you see uh, looks something like this. Um, once again, I'm plotting the intensity this way. This is my axis for intensity. And um, so it starts from here. Something like this is uh, what we started out with. Wow, was that only last week? I can't remember how long ago that was. Was that only last week? Yes. All right, um, but this seems familiar, right? And uh, you know we've done, so um, just as a reminder of the geometry that we are considering, you know, for light that's hitting the screen very far away, then we could consider these rays as being essentially parallel. So we are looking at this path length difference here. Uh, let me do it in different color. We are looking at this path length difference, delta x. This uh, path length difference led to a phase difference of delta phi of, let me write two pi first so that I don't forget, two pi times the path length difference divided by lambda wavelength, right? And whether we got destructive interference or constructive interference depended on is this phase difference, is this equal to um, even multiple of pi is it two pi n, or is it equal to an odd multiple of pi, or two n plus one pi? That's what it depended on. Full cycle difference, half a cycle difference. Right? All of that sounds familiar? All right, good. So um, let me just write down a few formulas that we derived as a kind of place marker, as a reminder. So uh, let's say this is my first maximum. So this happens at such an, um, it happens at an angular position that uh, satisfies this relationship. D sine theta is equal to some integer times the wavelength, right? All right. Um, and let me just lay down one more marker so that we have something to talk about. Um, let's say this first, uh, or the, the interference minimum, it happened at a location that satisfied this relationship. D sine theta is half a cycle apart, so half integer, and plus one half lambda. Good. Actually, I think we used the minus, and minus one half, so that m could be one, two, three, four. 
All right, so that's why we had a double slit. And hopefully all of this made sense and you understood it. Um, you could even describe this intensity function as a function of theta, and all that's good. And what I want you to think about conceptually is how some of these changes as we introduce additional slits, and how some of it actually doesn't change. So let, let me put it this way. Um, let's say that we, in, we open up more slits. So one thing I'm not going to change, let me put that in a box. I'm not going to change D. I'm going to put, uh, keep the separation between two neighboring slits at the same separation. Yeah? So if I want to add more slits while keeping this constant, what I would need to do is I would need to open up one more slit here. So there would be another additional D, and there would be light from here. Now, this is what I want you to look at. So the, conceptually, there are two key positions to look at. Position A, where you had a constructive interference happen, and position B, where you had a destructive interference happen. Where you had a constructive interference, are, am I still going to get constructive interference from all three slits? So we can think of them pairwise. It's a question of do any given two pair of them constructively interfere? All right, so three, there it's, there's only, I think, three pairs. One, two, three pairs, right? Okay, so what I know about this position is that between the two neighboring slits, there's exactly one cycle of path length difference. All right, that's the same thing for another pair of neighboring slits, right? What about two slits that are, you know, two neighbors apart? Do these two, const oh, let me draw one more light. Do these two, I guess one and three, do they constructively interfere with each other? Right, Samuel, can you explain why? Yeah, so, it's, uh, so between these two, there's uh, the path length difference is, let's say, one cycle. And between these two, that's additional one cycle. Let me just draw uh, auxiliary figures. So this is the reference. And so this is delta x for between these two. And this is the delta x for between this. So this is, one, this is the one cycle difference. This is not two cycle difference. If two slits are a two cycle difference, are they constructively interfering? Yeah, it's, it's still integer, still integer number of cycles. Yeah, so when you look at light falling at this location, it turns out that um, all three pairs you can think of, one, two, three, they are all constructively interfering when you look at any of those pairs. So what that means is this location that was at constructive interference, it remains constructively interfering. So it sort of remains there. Um, so, so that's actually one key thing that doesn't change in n slit interference. Whatever locations you are getting constructive interference in, that would be this location here, this location here. Whatever locations you had a constructive interference with a double slit interference, you can use those locations as constructive interference for any n number of slits. Because these were the locations where each neighbors were constructively interfering. So you add more neighbors, they keep adding with the same, you know, same phase. So that's one key thing to remember conceptually, that no matter how many number of slits you have, the location of constructive interference will not change. Now, the picture isn't so clean for destructive interference. When you look at, okay, I'm guessing I'm not getting evaluated today. So I actually have um, uh, 40 more minutes, <laughs> which is good. Um, so let's look at this location for destructive interference. 
So before, with the double slit, what we had here is a zero intensity. I had two slits that were destructively interfering, so no light at all whatsoever. That's what I had here. Let's see if that's still the case. Uh, we can do the same exercise pairwise. Um, so these two pairs at this location will be destructively interfering, right? All right. What about here? These two pairs, are they destructively interfering here? All right, so far so good. Uh, let's just check the last pair, these two pairs. Are they destructively interfering? Yeah, they are not. So, um, so I guess this is where you have to be careful. So with the single slit diffraction analysis, we did you know, pair them up and then um, did, the, did the analysis that way. So here, um, this, um, if I do this pair and then this pair, I've actually double counted the middle slit twice, right? So this is one way to think about it. When you are looking at what's the light intensity here, these two pairs, they cancel out to zero. So I have this one unpaired slit that is going to produce some intensity here. So I actually end up with uh, where there used to be destructive interference, I'm going to have some intensity. Not as much as intensity as what I have here, but I'll have some intensity. Um, all right, that's already getting a little bit complicated. Um, let me ask you this way. So I know two locations where I'm going to have interference maximum. How many interference minima do you think uh, could I get between these two? Two? Oh, everyone just says two. Yeah, you can get two. So um, let's see, how do I? Oh, I think that's a difficult to explain um, without a phaser diagram. <laughs> it's a matter of, um, so uh, I've been trying to avoid using phasers, and I, I don't know if I want to. Um, <laughs> so if we are using phasers, um, these two locations, in terms of phasers, this is what, it's, so this location, it's represented by this phaser. Phaser plus phaser plus phaser, they're all going the same direction, they end up in intensity. And the uh, uh, very first minimum you are going to get here, what that's going to be represented by is the phasers that's completing a triangle. So you have phaser going this way, this way, and then this way. And then the second minimum you get, it's going to be um, it's going to be completing a triangle, but sort of um, sort of turned around a little bit. So it, let me draw this properly. So here, e each of the phasors would be at um, I guess 60 degrees. So if this is my zero reference, that the first one went at 60 degrees, second one goes at uh, 60 degrees from that. Wait, that's not quite right. Um, 120 degrees, I think. All right, all right. Uh, so there's a reason I didn't like um, phasers. I, it never made intuitive sense to me. So what I'm instead of going to do is let me show you the, um, the plot in the textbook. So um, you, you guys did this for your reading assignment about a week ago. So hopefully this seems familiar. This is the end slit interference that you saw in your textbook. And with the three slits, um, this is the pattern that they are showing. So it's very hard to see. Um, this purple line that I'm following here, this uh, purple, I don't know if you can see it's purple. This purple line, that's the double slit in interference intensity. And the triple slit is um, the red line. So triple slit is following this line. The first minimum here, and the, this is the second minimum. And apparently, so where there used to be minimum, this is that unpaired slit, they call it secondary maximum. So you get that. Um, so that's a double slit. And when you have four slits, you know, in this picture, imagine adding yet one more slit here so that you have uh, four, uh, four um, rays of light. Then when you look at these places where you had a constructive interference, what I said before is still gonna be true. 
you're still going to have a constructive interference. That's what this is showing. And there will be additional locations where you get destructive interference. You get destructive interference here. He, oh, I guess um, destructive interference, this time it coincides. Because here, um, at this location, where two neighboring slits used to destructively interfere, now you can do this. These two destructively interfere, and then these two destructively interfere. Okay? Um, so, so you get this, uh, is that black? Maybe blue. Black or blue, navy pattern. Um, this peak here, destructive. So these are the secondary maximum where, um, how would you call it? Um, I guess at these locations, what must be going on is the three of them are combining in a pattern that they are destructively interfering. And no, that's not quite right. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, but the key thing is you have a destructive interference here, here, here. Okay? So when you are trying to approach, it, approach this conceptually, uh, some things will work. Like where there's going to be const um, constructive interference, your principal maximum, um, that you can get conceptually. I want you to get that. But I also want you to get the rest of this feature um, if you're trying to work it out conceptually, at some point it does get muddled up. This is the place uh, for mathematics. This is where we use the math for. 